Hello, students and families. Um, welcome to another week of our Middle School Ministry Weekend Service videos. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan. I have the pleasure of being on staff for our Middle School Ministry team, and um, we're just so glad you logged on. We are absolutely honored and privileged to be able to uh, provide this resource for our students and families at home. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar, perhaps, uh, with our videos, we start off with a game followed by a time of scripture and prayer, and then we end out our videos with a recording from our Wednesday night midweek services. Um, these services are from 7 to 8.15, and um, it's just a time where we get to uh, gather together as a community of middle schoolers and leaders and just uh, worship God and learn more about Him. So uh, whenever you are ready or if you are interested uh, we would love to see you on Wednesdays from 7 to 8 15 and uh, with that I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and enjoy the video hello students and welcome to another weekend service video I <laughs> don't know why I'm talking like that but it happened well glad you guys are enjoying the video hope you're having a wonderful Sunday and welcome back to another round of our tier maker list I ranked what did I rank fast food Megan ranked fruit last week and Robbie is the king of cereal this week I think it'd be inappropriate if Megan or myself ranked cereal over you Robbie probably but I'll just I mean, say I love, I love breakfast, um, and I prefer pop tarts, but cereal will do. Good, good. Well, we've done pop tarts <laughs> before. That you know, was maybe a month or two back, but now, now we're on to cereal. So, Robbie, take it away. You got, I think, what does it look like? Five tiers. Here we go. Twenty wow. or so cereal boxes. Let's do this. To hate me. All right, ready? So we're going to start with D tier. I think that's what all of you guys did. And so I'm going to swirl around looking, 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 looking. And I really don't even have to look because we all know that I hate chocolate and dairy together. I don't like chocolate milk. I don't like chocolate ice cream. I think okay. chocolate milkshakes are absolutely disgusting. So let's go ahead and move baby boy right here to the <laughs> D tier. We're also going to add in the Cocoa Krispies right there. Reese's wow. Puffs, disgusting. Okay. And um, is there any more? That's probably it. Oh, peanut butter crunch. That looks disgusting. I'm going to put that down there. There's my D tier, pretty fast. Wow. Um, so ra Raisin Bran and Mini Wheats are above Cocoa Puffs? Yes. I'm an adult, Connor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i love this already all right okay okay <laughs> oh, weird all right so raisin van not my fave uh but i can i will definitely eat it over anything chocolatey cereal um also life with no sugar gross why would i have that i'm only a little bit of an adult obviously <laughs> um we will go, you know, pops, disgusting aftertaste in my mouth. Ugh, yeah, it just tastes like true. eating wax. I feel the same way. I feel like pops, golden grams, honey bunches of oats, and honeycomb, all that weird, like waxy, sugary taste. Yeah. Like, I love sugar. I love the sweetness. That's just not it for me, you know? Yeah. All right. Right. Um, yeah, I think I think life is by far the best like healthy cereal, like not like sugar loaded cereal. I love life; it's great. Hey, I love life. Uh, I feel like there are better. Moving <laughs> on, moving on, moving on. You know, Captain Crunch. Um, I don't love the roof of my mouth. I've got no feeling up there, so I can eat these with no problem. Okay. Um, <laughs> frosted flakes. Oh, go ahead. Can I admit something? What? I don't think. I probably have. I do not remember ever having Captain Crunch in my life. And everyone always talks about the problem Ooh. of you eat it and it hurts the roof of your mouth. Never experienced it. Don't remember. No idea. Probably won't ever. Well, Wednesday at church, I'm going to add you to the prayer wall so that you can have some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the next prayer wall list. <laughs> Connor yeah. needs to eat Captain yeah. Crunch. 
Um, and I think that's it for my B category. And I need to take a breather because that is really, that took a lot of work. Yeah. Now here's, here's the moment of truth. You know, this is really where it comes down because I feel like all cereal is, is very good, but now you got a lot of cereals left and you gotta, you gotta put the winners on top and the, the losers not on top. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what, Megan, you like editing videos, right? Sure. Speed this up for me. No. Sounds okay. good. A tier in the A tier. Classic Rice Krispies. Okay. Okay. Love Rice Krispies. Snap Crackle Pot, baby. I love Rice Krispies. Rice Krispie treats. Those three little elves on there. My boys. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Next, maybe this is just marketing, but Apple Jacks, Cinnamon is the win I'm on, okay? Um, I love it. Maybe just because my dad is, you know, from the Caribbean, maybe that's why. Um, next thing, we're going to keep moving on up. Cookie Crisp, you know what? Love them, like cookies and milk. This is the only cereal with some semblance of chocolate in them that doesn't turn my milk brown, okay? I don't like chocolate mm -hmm. milk. Milk stays clean, cookie crisp stays eaten, okay? <laughs> Love it. All right, next thing I'm gonna do, Honey Nut Cheerios, okay? Honey Nut Cheerios. Ah, um, baby. Hey, um, I love oh, Honey Nut Cheerios. If, if regular Cheerios were on here, what would that be? They are on here and they're on B. Here. Oh, whoa, missed it. <laughs> all right, perfect, um, perfect. All right, I'm glad you pay attention to me, but that's fine. Um, we know that I love fruit things, okay? I'm gonna put them in A. They're incredible, not mm -hmm. my absolute favorite, but they're up there, okay? Yeah. And yep. then the last thing I'm gonna put in there, recently I did my Ancestry DNA test lots of english in there and a little bit of scottish and irish that's an a okay <laughs> that's an a and right now i'm just going to introduce you guys to the big three the, the big, big three. three in third place no! <laughs> tricks, tricks are super i love them i love them i love them i love tricks I love tricks. I love tricks. They're for kids and they're for me. Okay. Love it. <laughs> in second place, in second place, I really don't love the roof of my mouth that much. All right. <laughs> These incredible. Crunchy <laughs> pies. Okay. I can't. I can't. Favorite. All time favorite right here. I just can't get over, man. They get all three in your house. That's how you know they're the favorites. Oh my gosh. Beautiful. I will fully support Cinnamon Toast Crunch being the best. I love it. Totally. Absolutely. It's the best thing ever. Yeah. Cinnamon everything. <laughs> Chef's kiss. It's the resistance. Chef's kiss. <laughs> Do you guys have any grievances with my list? Hmm. I just think mini wheats are way too high. And life, I think life is is A or B for me, and mini wheats is definitely a D. That's what that's my only flip flop. Mm. I, I also I like chocolate cereal, but I'm fine with your logic. I get it, so I'm yeah. not going to fight it. You know. Same. I totally understand the logic. I would probably eat those chocolate cereals, but don't have a grievance if that's not your thing. Um, yeah. What I'll also say saying? this, the number one cereal of all time, not on this list, Trader Joe's Vanilla Almond Crunch. So good. No, no, what? no, 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 no. Have no, you had no, it? No, 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 no. Yes, I have. And no, 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 no. I think I might need to have a bowl. <laughs> I think I might need to go to the store and get myself some good cereal. Yeah, I'm out right <laughs> now too. Out. Just come to your house. <laughs> Just go grocery shopping I'll for share. cereal at Robbie's. Thanks, Robbie. Yeah. Sharing is caring.
Sharing <laughs> is caring. I love it. Well, stu- well students, uh, comment below where you think Robbie went wrong. And also comment below if you've had Trader Joe's Vanilla Almond Crunch. And, and let me know, am I right? Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Is Robbie right? Probably. <laughs> he's snacking. He's not, he's, he's got no problems right now. As he should. That's some good it. cereal. I love it. All right, students, we'll hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful weekend. Today, I'm going to be reading from Hebrews 6.10. It says this, God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. All right, let's pray. Lord God, we thank you so much for your love, Lord. We thank you so much that um, you see when we love others, Lord, and that um, it is a reflection of your love that you've given to us, Lord. I ask that you would open our hearts and open our ears to what Connor has to say this week, and that you would just give us the strength and the boldness to um, love those in need and to love them with the love that you've given us. Lord God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for knowing us. We thank you for loving us. And we thank you for sending your son. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Happy, I almost almost said Sunday. I keep getting mixed up Wednesdays and Sundays. They're still jumbled in my brain. It feels like a Sunday because this is like the large group. And then Sundays feel like Wednesdays because that's our tribes. And my brain's like, "Ah," like, I'm like, which day is Chick-fil-A open? I never know. Anyways, well, happy, um, Happy Wednesday. Man, I'm still mixing it up, and I literally was just talking about it. So glad you guys are here. Last week, we started this new series uh, called Canceled, and we talked a little bit about how, in general, people can be maybe a little nasty, maybe a little cruel, maybe a little mean to one another, but we did talk a lot about also, like, how on social media, things can be pretty brutal. But I'll say this, though. Sometimes I think social media can be very wholesome, especially when our grandparents are involved. So I don't know, here's a question. Does anyone here that's in middle school have a Facebook? <laughs> an, audible, an audible laugh was my response on that. That is awesome. Okay, well, I got a couple examples. The reason you might not know of Facebook or you might not be super like familiar with it, but it's kind of classic now for all of our grandparents to be on it. So here I found some funny uh, posts or comments or misunderstandings of just like general grandparents mixing up um, stuff on 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 uh, Facebook. So here we go. Here's this first one. She's just oh ooh writing some. <laughs> so we got Maxine. Looks adorable. You just want to give her a hug, right? She goes, "Hello, Benjamin, John, Connie, Sandy, and the rest." I'm assuming her friends. She really wanted to let us know that uh, she says, "I have no comment at this time." <laughs> Helpful. <laughs> Can you imagine just like throwing something on Snapchat? No comment. We're good. Just move on. All right. Let's look at this next one. Maxine, that was great. Okay. This one's, oh, you might not be able to see. I, it's kind of complicated, but here we go. Top half is a text of a somebody to their mom. And they say, this is a laughing face with the laughing face emoji. You have to stop using it on Facebook when someone's animal dies. And so here is the, the quote that, <laughs> the, <laughs> this is, Horrible. Oh my gosh. So someone posts this picture with a bunch of pictures of their dog and they said, lost one of the great loves of my life today. Honey, my precious boxer. My heart is so sad. I will never forget you. And then Deanna commented, so sorry, laughing face. (laughs) Because the crying, she thought it was like the crying face, but it was like the laughing. Yeah. Yikes. Not good. Not good. All right. Let's go to the next one. Here we go. Uh, Where's the Star Wars fans in the house? Anyone? Here we go, love it. So we've got the obvious Death Star in the background and Graham Grahams, I think, just didn't figure it out. Oh, how beautiful. (laughs) That is just amazing. God at his finest. Thank you, love. You love, love you, Graham. Oh, Grandma thought that God created the Death Star and put it in behind some mountains. I love it. All right, a couple more, a couple more. All right, (laughs) it looks long, but here we go. So somebody just 
I think copy and pasted something in the middle of one of their Facebook posts without realizing it looks like they were cooking. People need to quit making jabs about Obama and the unemployment situation because everyone who's making the comments either have jobs or they're, one, saute the onion in butter, wet onions for cold and stir in garlic and cook for three more minutes, set aside. Two, in another pan, melt the half, it's like, whoa, whoa, what happened here? Are we talking politics or cooking butter and onions? Uh, anyways, I thought that was great. Last one, I think we got one more. I believe. <laughs> this is great. Someone took a screenshot of their Facebook page and printed out the entire screenshot, including the comments and how many people liked it, and put that in a frame in their house. Has anyone's parents or grandparents done that one yet? No. Okay. That one would be pretty brutal. I know. It's so wholesome. You just kind of love it. You're like, oh, that's so cute. But um, Man, social media, it's, it's funny sometimes. I, I, I love uh, personally seeing what my grandparents post. on. That's probably like one of three reasons I have Facebook right now is to watch what my grandparents still are posting. None of it's that bad, but some of it's just uh, some, some gold, some gold. But, um, you know, I wouldn't mind spending a little bit less time in my life being like tech support for my parents and grandparents. I don't know if you guys have hit that age yet where you're like constantly, they're like, how do you do this? Like, what's going on? And they keep coming to you and you're like, Oh my gosh, I've explained this a couple times. So I got a couple, a, a quick video. It's from a commercial, but let's see if uh, any, anyone's family is like this. Let's play this video. Instead of mailing everyone my vacation photos, I'm saving a ton of time by posting them to my wall. Ooh, I like that one. It's so quick. It's just like my car insurance. I save 15% in just 15 minutes. I save more than that in half the time. I unfriend you. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs> so she's posting pictures to her wall in her house. You get the joke. And at the end, she's like, I unfriend you. And then her friend's like, this is not how this works. I love it. Does that remind you of anyone in your family? Do you have like an aunt or uncle or grandparent that's like, uh, Grandma, you need to figure it out? No? Okay, a couple of you. Love it. Love it. So um, Aunt Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> we got a name dropped in the very front. Oh, brutal, brutal. I won't repeat it into the mic, but that's awesome. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I think it's, it's easy for us maybe to get frustrated with a family member who's trying to just can't grasp something that for us might be really, really basic or you think may be so obvious. And it can be easy to get frustrated um, to help them out. But here's the um, you know, I think every single day, obviously that's just some silly examples from social media, but I think every day in real life, we have some small ways that we can help someone who's in need. So whether it's grandma figuring out what's the difference between a crying laughing face and a crying sad face emoji, or whether it's, you know, you're, at, you're sitting eating lunch and your friend has like a piece of green food in their teeth. You know, it's like that's something really small and they need help and you can help them out. I think all the time we're, we have these little... Uh, things in our life where someone needs help. And depending on what that, uh, the, your mood at the time or who the person is that might need help or the, the situation around them, whether you've helped them before or not, sometimes you like might help them. <laughs> but I think sometimes, depending on the person, how you're feeling, you might see someone with something in your teeth and you're like, eh, I'm not gonna say anything. It's kind of just like, let it slide on those little things. And so I think everyone is helpful sometimes. But there are some times where we aren't, when we're too tired, busy, or annoyed to be able to help out. And every day, I think we're surrounded by people who need our help, whether it's really, really small or whether it is really, really big. Here's a story I think that uh, I think about last time I needed help. I've told the story, I think, on uh, one of the sermon videos earlier this summer. But I was uh, chopping a lime the other day, and I cut my finger really, really, really bad. And it hurt. Has anyone cut their finger slicing things? I feel like, wow, I, would, I probably didn't even cook until I was in college. So well done. I'm just proud of you that you're using a knife in the kitchen. But anyways, I cut my finger and it was so painful. And the worst part was about 10 minutes later, I had it all wrapped up and I went to close the door of my front house and we have a puppy and he took me one way and I tried to close the door. But you know how like the end of my index finger was hurting and so I didn't bend it to grab the doorknob and so I had the, my finger extended and then I closed the door, smashing my finger. <laughs> like the, this finger I cut 10 minutes earlier and I literally instantly like to my knees crying in pain. Like it was like, oh, like nothing mattered in my life besides how painful my finger was. And in that moment, 
I needed help. Like, I was like, Jess, who's my wife. Some of you guys know her. And uh, I was like, oh, like screaming. She's like, what's happening? And I'm like, get paper towels. And there's like blood on my shirt. Sorry, that was kind of gross. And I won't talk about how messy that was. But anyways, like in that moment, I needed help, right? Like I couldn't fix this. And then a little bit later, how do you put a Band-Aid on your finger with one hand? That's really hard, right? And so I was constantly needing help. Like, Jess, can you... Can you help me put the Band-Aid on my finger? Like, how do you wrap it around? And man, in those moments, I needed help. And maybe, I don't know if uh, something's popping in your mind right now, sometime where you needed to help somebody else or in a time where you, you needed to help them and you didn't, maybe you did, or a time where you needed help. And some, sometimes people will come to the rescue, right? But sometimes you're just kind of stuck. And here's the thing, when you are in a situation where you need help, you are very vulnerable. You guys know that word, vulnerable, right? Like, you are vulnerable, you are weak. When I, my finger hurt that much and I was on the ground, like, I, nothing mattered in my life besides fixing the pain of my index finger. When I was in need, I was weak, I was vulnerable, and I needed somebody to help. And the reality is that when people are in need, we don't always respond with compassion or care or love. And that's what I want us to think about today, that, man, wouldn't we love to live in a world where every time you were in need of something, really big, really small, every time you're like, man, only if I had this, I had a need. And what if every time you had a need, it was fulfilled? Like every single time you had something, you needed help, you had a need, somebody was there for you. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a world like that? I think it would. And here's the thing, that's not the reality we live in currently, but I think that kind of world is possible. I think that's the kind of world that Jesus calls us to help create. And so we're gonna be looking at a couple passages today in Mark chapter 10 is the first one. So if you have a Bible, you can open up to Mark chapter 10. We'll put it up on the screen in a moment as well, but I'll love you guys uh, for those who brought Bibles. It is uh, Matthew, Mark, or is that in the New Testament or Old Testament? Yeah, New Testament. So the Bible has two halves. The first half is from the beginning of the world and it is, uh, leads up to Jesus. The second half is written about 2,000 years ago and it's all about the life of Jesus and then the early followers, what we call the church or early Christians. And so Mark is one of the, the books that writes about who Jesus was, what he did, the things he said, and what happened. So Mark chapter 10, we get an example, one of the common examples of Jesus helping, meeting the needs of the vulnerable. And Jesus was often interrupted by people's cries for help. So Mark chapter 10, verse 46, we're gonna see that in this passage. Then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. So here's what's going on. Jesus, we're picking it up. It sounds like they are leaving a city. There's the disciples following and there's a large crowd following. So at this point, a lot of people are trying to figure out who's this Jesus guy? What's going on, man? He has these teachings and these healings. Like people are trying to figure out who Jesus is. And so there's this large crowd that's traveling with him. And while they were leaving the city, a blind man named Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. So there's a blind man who is begging on the side of the road. And when he hears, when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. So here's a story. Jesus is traveling. A large crowd is with him. He has all these things to do, all these people to talk with. And there's this blind man who is in need. He's begging on the side of the road. There's nothing that he can do to see. There's nothing he can do to fix his situation. So he is crying out to Jesus. He goes, he, he, he cries, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The story continues. As this man cries out in verse 48, many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So this man, he is begging. He's going, Jesus, help me. God, where are you? Like, Jesus, are you there? Jesus, where are you? Have mercy on me. And he's crying. And how do the people respond? <laughs> people around, they just go, hey, quiet down, man. You don't have the time for this. Like, look, can't, like, I was gonna say, can't you see? Um, but uh, we have this large crowd with us. Like, there's all these people. Jesus has more important things to do. You need to just, like, quiet down. And these are people that were 
disciples of Jesus who are supposed to love people. And they kind of just tell this man, listen, you're in need, but like, just quiet down. Stop talking. This isn't about you. You're not worthy to have Jesus talk to you. That is what happened. And he just gets louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. Then in verse 49, it says that Jesus stopped and said, call him. I love this. Jesus sees someone in need and he stops what he's doing. He could have been teaching, could have been walking, could have been loving these large crowd of people, all this distraction around him. And he stops what he is doing. He doesn't listen to what the crowd wants him to do, but he stops and he speaks to this man is, who's in need. And we're gonna see how he helps. So they, they go and they call to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, this, Bar, this man, Bartimaeus, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. So Jesus, he goes, listen, you're in need. What do you want from me? How can I help you? Is what he basically is asking. The blind man said, rabbi, which means teacher, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. So this blind man, Bartimaeus, he cries out to Jesus. The people around Jesus, the followers, this large crowd, they tell him, dude, stop talking. Like you're just a you're a nuisance. You're in the way. Like, yeah, you're in need, but come on, man. But this man, he cries out. Jesus notices someone is in need. He slows down his life. He stops what he is doing. He talks with him. And then he helps him. So he slows down, he stops, he talks with him, and he helps him. Students, this is the example of what it looks like to help, to, to help those who are in need. We say all the time, we wanna be people who live and love like Jesus. This is the example that we have, what Jesus does. So students, this week, you need to love people who are in need. That's what I want you to remember. That's what when your parents pick you up and they say, hey, what'd you learn today? I want you to just go, ah, we need to love people who are in need. That's what Jesus did. That's what we read in Mark chapter 10. Jesus loved people who are in need and that's what you can do. So when things are busy, things are going on, you can slow down. You can stop and notice when someone is in need. You can stop what you're doing, talk with them about their needs and help out however you can. That's the example Jesus gives here. But here's the thing. This is not just an example that Jesus gives. He teaches about it often as well. We're gonna open up to Matthew chapter 25. And Jesus talks about a similar idea. He gives us an example of him loving someone in need. And now he's gonna tell us that we need to love someone in need. He talks using a parable. Who remembers what a parable is? We talk about it often in Bible. So maybe kind of like raise your hand if you're familiar. Maybe a parable is a story that Jesus kind of makes up to help us learn something about life. It helps us learn about God, maybe helps us learn about us, but he kind of just will like make up a story. Sometimes he's talking about animals. Sometimes he's talking about um, fictional people. Sometimes he's talking about coins, right? He's talking about all sorts of things. And today, what we're gonna look at in Matthew 25, he talks about the kingdom of God. He talks about goats and sheep. Does anyone own any goats or sheep? That would be so epic. What if, what if I had goats and sheep like coming out of the, that'd be, oh. Dang it. Why do I always have the good ideas in the moment? I should have bought goats and sheep and brought them here today. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry. So here's what we need to do. I need um, some help. So if you, are, there's this like little blue line right here. So if you were on this side, and you're on my left, but you're kind of on the right. So I feel like you will be the right side. You will be my sheep for this story. And then this side, you will be my goats. Here's what I need. Every time, only when I'm reading from Matthew 25, once I finish the story, I don't want this to continue. So, only when I'm reading from Matthew 25, when I'm reading the story, anytime I talk about the sheep or the people on the right or the righteous, this is good things. Um, I didn't plan this out. I forgot what I was gonna tell you to say. I think every time I say sheep, you guys give a woohoo like that, okay? So one, two, three. Yes, I love it, I love it. So sheep, woohoo, it's a good thing. They're on the right, they're the righteous. And goats, I apologize, you guys are the bad ones. And so the goats, they're the unrighteous or the wicked. So. <laughs> No, it's not a cheer. You are not cheering and celebrating. Oh my gosh. No, every time I say the goats or the people on the left, I want you to go wah, wah. All right, one, two, three. All right, so the sheep, 
And the goats. All right, I love it. So anytime I talk about the sheep or the people on the right, that is when you guys give a woohoo. And when, why did I go such a high octave on that? <laughs> what just happened? And anytime I talk about the goats, the people on the left, you guys give a... All right, I love it, I love it. So here is this passage, it's kind of long, so pay attention, listen for the sheeps and the goats. Jesus says, when the son of man comes in his glory and all of the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. So Jesus comes as the son of man, he's sitting on the throne. All the nations, this is a prediction about what is gonna happen in the future. All of the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> then, <laughs> whew, come on, compose yourself. It's, uh, this is dumb. This is silly. All right, then, <laughs> come on, Connor, focus. Here we go. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, though you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for me since you, for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. And then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, truly I tell, tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So he speaks to the sheep <laughs> and he says, you when I was in need, you helped me. And then he turns and he says, then he, in verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, <laughs> depart, <laughs> this is awesome. Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They, yeah, sorry, I, yeah. Will also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger and needing clothes or sick and in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to, <laughs> nice, I forgot about that one, but the righteous to eternal life. All right. Thank you for the support. I'm gonna start talking about sheeps and goats and you guys cannot be woohooing and wow wowing me. All right, so uh, Jesus is pretty clear here, right? Like this is an kind of an intense passage. Can you hear the like severity of what he's, or the intensity of which Jesus is speaking with? He basically is saying, listen, the people who know me and love me, I'm, he, for whatever reason, he calls them sheep and we're not gonna get into that. But he says, listen, these people helped those who were in need. The people who know me and loved me saw others who were hungry or thirsty or sick or in prison and they cared for me. Those people, they know me, they love me and they love those around us. They love those in need. And then there's this other group, this other group, they don't know me, they don't know Christ, they haven't been uh, born again. And because of that, man, they don't love people around them. There's people who are in all sorts of need and they turn aside they don't care for them, they don't love them, and they don't help those who are in need. Students, if we're to follow Jesus, we need to be people who help those and love those who are in need. What Jesus is clearly saying, if you are my follower, you will love people who are in need. And so I ask, how do we do this? How can we as Christians, as followers of Jesus, help those who are in need? I wanna give you a couple of thoughts. It's not only about our actions, it's about our hearts. 
It is not only about our actions, it is about our hearts. Jesus cares more about what is happening in our hearts. If you just do nice things, if you care for people because I told you to or because your parents said that that's a good thing to do, but you don't really care for them, then you've missed the point. If you see someone in need and just go, I mean, like, I guess, yeah, like this person needs some money, I might buy them a lunch. Like, that's just like the thing to do. Sure, you've missed the point. It's not just about actions. God cares about our heart's desires to love people, to be full with the love of Christ, to love others. It's not just about your actions, it's about your heart. It's not only about loving others, it's about loving God. We saw that in that Matthew 25 passage. Here's a little secret. When we love people around us, especially people who are in need, who are vulnerable, who are weak because of whatever is going on in their lives, when we love those people, we are loving God and honoring him. It's not only, it's not about what we have, it's about what we can give. You might be thinking, Connor, I don't have money. Like I, I, I can't be just helping every person who needs a couple bucks. That's not what I'm talking about about today. This parable Jesus gives isn't about like the wealthy and the, par- and, the, and the powerful. And maybe you come from a wealthy family, but you probably don't have a ton of money to be just given away. It's not, it's not about that. It's about what we can give. Now God has given you time. He's given you space to be able to love and listen to people, to make friends, to give friendship to others. And we can give that sacrificially for God's purposes to love people. Here's this last thought. It's not about them. It's about us. Hmm. You might be thinking, what? Wait, I thought it was about helping them, not about me. It's not about them, it's about us. I think often, if we are just thinking about people who are in need, then all of a sudden we put ourselves above them. And all of a sudden it might become in your mind like, oh, I can give to them. Like I have more value. I have the money. I have the time. I have the resources and I can like help them, the needy people who like need my love and care. And like I'm up here and it's them down there. It is not about them. It is about us, all of us, Christians, non-Christians, people who are created in the image of God. Jesus, when we saw him speaking with Bartimaeus, he didn't just talk to Bartimaeus for him. He valued the blind beggar. He came up to the beggar and said, hey, what do you need? And he let him speak. He showed him compassion, but also respect. It is not just about them. It is about us as a unifying story. I think it is easy for us to read the story in Mark chapter 10 specifically. It's easy for us. Like I was saying earlier, we need to be like Jesus and help those in need. And so all of a sudden we start to read ourselves as Jesus in the story. We're not Jesus in the story. Me and you, we're just like the beggar of this story. All of us, you included, were in need. So yes, we've been talking about other people are in need, but I wanna pause and just make it so clear that you and I are in need. And when we read the story, we need to remind ourselves that we are just like Bartimaeus. We are just like this blind beggar. And maybe we can see with our eyes, but we have a need. Jesus notices our need and he fixes it. That the the story of the Bible, the story of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ is that you students were in need. You couldn't earn your salvation. You couldn't impress God with your good works. There was nothing you could do to fix the sin in your life. All of us constantly will be struggling with the things that we do. I, each and every single day, Robbie, each and every day, struggles with the sinful patterns that we have and there's nothing we can do to completely fix it. I was in need and you were in need and Jesus saw us in our need and just like Bartimaeus the beggar, just like the blind man on the side, Jesus sees us. He stops what he's doing and he helps us in our needs. And that's why Jesus came to die on the cross for our sins. We saw Jesus live an example of how he can love Bartimaeus of someone who's in need. He he taught us in Matthew 25 that we need to help those in need. And then he demonstrated it by showing up on the cross, dying for you and for me. When you were in need of a savior, Jesus was there for you and he provided it for you. 
So Jesus, yes, he provided it in the past, but students, when you mourn, when you are sad and you need joy in your life, you need comfort, Jesus meets you in your need and provides comfort. Students who are struggling with anxiety and worrying about what's gonna happen with your family, what's gonna happen with your grades, what is gonna happen with the election maybe. I don't know what you're worrying about. You might be anxious and Jesus stops and can pause and help bring you help in your need and love you and provide peace for you. You and I are the ones in need. Jesus loves us through it all. And because of that, we should be full of the love of Christ that we receive from him and seek to bless the world. That's the point of our our lesson today, that you and I, if we were to live in love like Jesus, we need to love people who are in need. First, recognizing that it's not gonna impress God, it's not gonna uh, make um, uh, us get some bonus points in heaven, but it's just the reality that if you students have come to know Christ as your savior, you should be full of his love and that should return and love and care for those around us. If you want to follow Jesus, it means to love those who are in need. Let's pray and let's worship God as we conclude our evening tonight. Jesus, I thank you for the blind man Bartimaeus who lived a life years and years and years of his story that we never even saw, but he waited and he waited And Jesus, you, in real life, on this earth, this just wasn't a story that we read, but God, this is your life of of, of your son in Jesus, that he saw the blind man who needed help, and he was his savior. God, I pray that you would equip us to love those who are in need. God, I pray that you'd help us to slow down to not get too busy with school, to not get too busy with life picking up and sports that are going back to practice or whatever else it might be. God, would you help us to slow down and to help those and to love those and care for those in need? And God, would your spirit work in our hearts tonight? Would you bring specific people to mind when we think of those who just need something? Whether it's someone to talk to, someone to pray with, someone to laugh with, whether it's just us giving somebody time, God, would you help us to love those who are in need? And God, would that be um, an outpouring of our heart as we reflect on, as we think about, as we consider and remember that Jesus, you loved us first. Would our love for the world be um, an outpouring of the love you show us And God, would you be glorified? Would your name be honored? Would you be lifted high in the lives of these students? Even here tonight, as we sing praises to your name. God, would you receive all of the glory? Would you receive all of the honor? We look to you and we love you. Pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. i
Last one, you guys have uh, an opportunity to go and put a prayer up on the prayer wall. If you're struggling to love other people or to do any of the things that Connor said in his message, or if you're going through anything you need somebody to stand with you with and pray, you need to be encouraged, go ahead and just write it. Um, there's one prayer wall over here on this side, and then there's another little one over there on that side. And so just you have an opportunity to go and take that for this last song.
open up my heart to you now So do what only you can Jesus, have your way in me now I open up my heart to you I open up my Jesus, have your 